With the Ryzen 5000 series, AMD decided not to include any stock coolers in the box, with the 5600X being the exception. This means that if you purchase a Ryzen 9 5900X CPU, you will need to purchase an aftermarket cooler. But let's just pretend that AMD did include stock coolers, just like the Ryzen 3000 series, or if a user is upgrading from a previous gen Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 CPU and decided to keep their Wraith Prism cooler, what kind of thermals could they experience? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be discussing a topic that's been on my mind for a while now. That is, what would happen if someone decided to use a Wraith Prism cooler, which is one of the higher-end stock coolers AMD's included with the previous generation Ryzen series, with a 5900X. The 5900X, along with the rest of the 5000 series CPUs, were announced by AMD on the 8th of October 2020 and had hit store shelves on the 5th of November, albeit with very limited supply. What was interesting to note was that this time around AMD decided not to include any stock coolers in the box with this new generation of processors, which I thought was a bit strange since these new CPUs were considerably marked up as well. Previous generation Ryzen processors had stock coolers included with them, and depending on which SKU you got, the cooler varied. Such as a lower end Ryzen CPU would get the Wraith Stealth cooler, and higher end models would get the top of the line Wraith Prism cooler. However, their reasoning for this was that most enthusiasts would be buying aftermarket coolers anyways. And they also recommend you use a robust solution for higher end parts with lots of cores as they'll generate lots of heat. Still, I think it would have been convenient for the user had they included these stock coolers in case somebody is in the process of building their PC, they don't have access to an aftermarket cooler right away, their budget may not allow for it, or they're upgrading from a previous generation CPU that had a Wraith Prism such as the 3900X or 3700X and decided to just stick with it. I know a lot of folks who stuck with using the Wraith Prism cooler that came with the 3900X or 2700X processor. So if they were already content with its performance and they upgraded to the 5900X, I'm sure they'd at least consider reusing it again. So that's what we're here to see. We'll be pairing the Ryzen 9 5900X with the Wraith Prism cooler. I've had the CPU cooler laying around since I got my 3900X, but had been using the Noctua NHD15 instead, which is of course miles better. And so we'll be putting it through a few various tests and scenarios to see how it performs with this 12 core beast of a processor. I'll also be comparing it against an aftermarket cooler, which will be the Corsair H115i Pro XT. This is a 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. So one of the more higher end solutions on the market in terms of aftermarket cooling. I really like this AIO, it runs fairly quiet, there is hardly any pump noise, the CPU block also looks pretty cool with the RGB, and you'll see in just a moment it does a very good job at keeping our CPU cool. This will allow us to see how the 5900X does with a stock cooler versus the benefits of using an aftermarket cooler. Will the Wraith Prism get absolutely blown out of the water, and is it worth it to jump to an aftermarket solution? Now if you're looking for an in-depth review of the 5900X, I did one just recently where I benchmarked it in various applications and games along with comparing it against some previous generation parts, so if you're interested in all of that, I'll leave a link down in the video description below. I highly recommend checking it out. Let's run down the specs for the rest of the system. For the motherboard, we've got an MSI X570 Unify, and please note we are testing the CPUs without PBO or Auto OC, just running it stock. The RAM consists of 4 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper Steel memory. The GPU is an Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090. Powering all the components is an EVGA 1000G3 80 plus gold certified power supply, and Instead of a case, we're just using an open test bench with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. So now that we've gotten the specs out of the way, let's just jump into the results. For the first test, I decided to test both the coolers in an idle condition. Here we can see the Corsair H115i Pro XT average CPU temps around 41 degrees Celsius and peaked at 47 degrees, whereas our Wraith Prism averaged 48 degrees Celsius and peaked at 74 degrees Celsius, which is quite high. Now let's make one thing clear, even though I'm calling this an idle test, Windows is never actually in an idle state, even if you just leave the system at desktop with nothing open. There is always some kind of background process happening which can cause the CPU to exhibit these higher peaks in temperature. If it was truly idle, then you'd just see it sitting statically in regards to temps with very little variation. Windows can decide, hey, I'm gonna do an antivirus scan. It might start downloading and doing updates. It might start defragging or optimizing a drive. Or if you have third-party software, that might undergo an update. For example, if you have Steam open and have an installed game in your library, it might start to update that. 
the list can go on, but I'm sure you guys get the point. This line graph gives us a better insight over what happens when we plot the data over time to see the behavior of the coolers. I've also plotted the AIO coolant temperature as well, and here you guys can see that with the AIO, temps are a lot more consistent, whereas with the Wraith Prism, it seems to show a lot more spikes in temps. Now, in an idle state, there may be a lot more burst workloads happening, as I just mentioned, where it puts a load on the CPU for a short moment. And in that situation, the AIO can do a much better job at sustaining temps. And this is evident here by our coolant temperature, which for the most part remains at around 28 degrees Celsius pretty consistently. And the AIO remains in the low 40s, whereas the air cooler exhibits more spikes. And this is because air coolers can become saturated or soaked with heat a lot quicker than AIOs can since we're dealing with water and you have a higher thermal capacitance and while the AIO does exhibit these spikes they're nowhere near as drastic. For our next test we've got a fairly heavy CPU synthetic stress test IDA64 which was left running for about an hour. Now IDA64 isn't one of the most extreme stress tests out there. Programs like Prime95 or OCCT can be a lot more brutal but this kind of test gives us an idea of what kind of thermal behavior the CPU will experience with these coolers under a heavy all-core workload. An example of this kind of workload can be rendering in Blender with the CPU or using a video editing software as they'll generally max each of the cores out to 100%. Here we can see the Corsair H159i Pro XT maintain an average CPU temp around 68 degrees Celsius and peaked at 71 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good for a workload like this. Our Wraith Prism on the other hand is running much hotter. With an average CPU temp of around 84 degrees Celsius, that's a 24% increase, so a drastic difference. This kind of heavy workload shows the benefits of using a high-end cooling solution, such as an AIO. With that said, I just want to make it clear these kind of temps from the prism would still be considered safe even if you ran them for an extended period of time, but of course, you can reduce it significantly by just jumping to a larger air cooler like the NHD15. Our temperature over time graph outlines the significant performance difference of the stock cooler and the aftermarket solution, where throughout the duration of the test, the 5900X is running in the mid-80s with the Wraith prism, whereas with the h 115i Pro XT temps are in the high 60s. Our coolant temperature is also running pretty chill at around 30 degrees Celsius and doesn't really get much higher than that. The last scenario we'll be taking a look at is gaming and for our title we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider. When it comes to a 3D application like a game there can be a lot of variance when it comes to CPU temps as generally there's not a constant load on all the cores. Some parts of the game may be more CPU intensive whereas some may be more demanding on the GPU. It also depends on how heavily threat the game is. Shadow of the Tomb Raider does take advantage of multiple cores. While gaming, the Corsair H159i Pro XT does a very good job at keeping our 5900X cool, averaging around 58 degrees Celsius and peaking at 64. Comparing it to our Wraith Prism, we're once again seeing significantly higher temps at 74 degrees Celsius. That's a 28% increase, and it peaked at 76 degrees Celsius. Now, I will reiterate it again, you won't damage the CPU or anything by gaming under these kind of temps. At worst, you may experience a bit of performance regression, as with higher temps, the CPU won't be boosting as high, whereas with our liquid cooler, the CPU should be able to stretch its legs a bit further. This graph here should explain what I'm talking about, where with the Wraith Prism, we can see most of the cores sitting around 4.5 GHz while boosting between 4.5 to 4.6 GHz for the most part, and some of the better cores are boosting a little above 4.7 GHz. In comparison, the Corsair H159i Pro XD, we're seeing a similar story, but an uplift of around 100 to 150 megahertz, where now we're seeing the cores hover around 4.6 to 4.7 gigahertz, with some of our better cores boosting above 4.8 gigahertz. So this could result in better performance from the 5900X using the Corsair AIO, but it wouldn't be a huge advantage over the Wraith Prism. Finally, taking a look at our temperature over time graph allows us to see the advantage that the AIO has to offer over the stock Wraith Prism cooler. Throughout most of the duration of gameplay, the 5900X runs in the high 50s, which is pretty good for a gaming load, whereas with the Wraith Prism, it's in the mid 70s. And again, we see the coolant temps just slightly under 30 degrees Celsius, and that's one of the major contributors as to why AIOs perform so well. So there you guys have it. After seeing the results, it's pretty clear who the winner is when it comes to thermal performance and I can see why AMD didn't bother including stock coolers with these high-end 5000 series CPUs, as the majority of users will be using some sort of aftermarket solution to benefit from lower temps as we just saw. Maybe they won't be, you know, splurging for such a high-end cooler, 
as you know, people have different budgets, but for the 5900X, if you're an air cooler kind of guy, then you'll probably be opting for options such as the Noctua NHD15 or the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, as those are very cost effective solutions for air coolers. Or if you are a liquid cooling kind of guy, then the Corsair H159 Pro XD, as I've just demonstrated, does admirably, and any dual or triple rad AIOs for that matter will perform very well. The bottom line is that yes, there will be a significant difference going from a cooler like the Wraith Prism to a higher end solution, especially if you spend most of your time, you know, using core heavy applications. The benefits of using an aftermarket cooler include reasons such as, but not limited to, better thermals, lower noise, and higher performance. Also keep in mind we tested in an open test bench, whereas most will be using an enclosed chassis, and so that can also considerably impact temps. Last year I showed how badly the Wraith Prism performed with the Ryzen 5 3600 in a Q500L, which is known for poor thermals. There will of course be costs associated with these coolers and the Corsair H159 currently retails for around 130 bucks, so definitely not cheap, whereas the Wraith Prism, hey you might already have this thing laying around, or if this is really all you need, you can probably find it fairly cheap on the used market, but at least we know that running a Ryzen 9 5900X with this cooler is doable. Maybe not ideal depending on the scenario, but it's an option and you could potentially save yourself quite a bit of money, especially considering how marked up the 5000 series CPUs are currently going for. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.